There's actually a bit of debate over how I should pronounce this. I call it SQL injection. The acronym is SQL. Whichever way you call it, it's a way to attack websites that really shouldn't work anymore, but still does. SQL or SQL is a language in which you talk to databases. Uh, and it's fairly, it's, it's fairly like English, actually. You can actually say things like, select from this table. Um, it's not a complicated language, there are no great amounts of, of curly brackets and semicolons and things like that. It can be, but equally you can pretty much type commands in near English into it and you'll get results back from your database. And this has existed for years and years and years. And that was all fine until the web came along. And now people are looking at websites and are thinking these, these need to be hooked up to databases. Because way back when, when, when Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, um, it was pretty much, I'm going to request a document and you're going to send that document back to me. And eventually people worked out that what you really wanted to do was, was send a document and have different things come back depending on what you sent. Maybe you could type in a search request and that would go to a database and pull back something. That's great, that's, a, that's brilliant, that's a, a wonderful invention. And unfortunately, some programming languages uh, dealt with this in a sensible way uh, and some did not. And one of the most notable ones that didn't uh, is a language called PHP. Um, I'm, I'm a PHP coder. It's a very easy language to write in. It's uh, a friendly language. I still haven't met any other language that lets me develop code at the speed that I'm able to. Um, it's very fault tolerant, uh, within reason. It doesn't always give you the best results when, you, when it does, but you know, it, it's, it's friendly, it's easy to pick up, and crucially, you can just write it into a text file, upload it to a web server in most of the world, and it'll just work. You can type in PHP code and have it just run. So the barrier to entry is really, really low, which in one way is brilliant. It makes web programming much more accessible. Facebook was originally written in PHP. Um, innumerable things have originally been written in PHP, and loads of things still are. WordPress still is. The trouble is that if you're not careful, there's a lot of ways to go wrong. This isn't just PHP, but I'll, I'll use it as an example. You talk to a database by issuing a command like this. Select star from users, where username equals Tom. Great. And the database will send back all the details it knows about the user called Tom. Brilliant. But the catch is those quotation marks. Because if I'm not careful about what I send, then we could cause some problems. Let's say, for example, that I have a, uh, a web form that lets me log in, and I type in Tom, and it sends that and brings back Tom. OK. Now let's say I type in Tom with a quote mark in it. And if you're not careful, what will happen is the language will send something like this. So let's start from users where username equals Tom, and then I put a quote mark in, and then it puts a quote mark in. It fails because the quote marks don't match up. And, and the whole thing crashes, it just sends back an error. That's mildly annoying. Um, and a big problem, of course, is putting in any text that has quote marks. The catch is, you can do a lot of damage that way. Because that language doesn't just have select. It has insert to add new stuff. It has update to change stuff. And it has delete to remove stuff. Um, so if I were to send, say, a username that was Tom, sem uh, close quotes, semicolon, and then put another command in there, like delete everything, it's not a literal command, but something like that, it would work. So we have a look at how that works. We've got the normal command, select star from users, where username uh, is Tom. Long command there. But when you put in Tom, I'm going to send that, and then I'm going to send this. Drop all databases. Hit enter, it will get converted into a plain English command in SQL language, it will get sent, and the database will go, well, that's exactly what I should do. It's going to understand that there's a new command at the semicolon and that it should delete everything. The main way around it is escaping. When there is a dangerous character, like a quote mark, you put a slash before it. And by you, I mean you, the programmer writing this. You go through and you use a function that says, everywhere there is a quote mark, put this slash before it. And before you send it to the database, you do that. Input comes in from the user, add some slashes to it to make it safe, 
send it out to the database. And the database looks at those slashes and goes, right, every time there's one of those, this thing that's coming next, just treat it as a regular quote mark. Don't treat it as anything special. It's in the text. Just treat it as that. And if you want to send an actual slash, you send two slashes. The first one to say, treat the next one as a real character, and then it works, but it's clunky. Um, and for a while, this kind of send the command in plain English was the only way to make things work in a couple of languages, including PHP, the most commonly used web programming language in the world. To make this worse, the command to add those slashes was the wonderfully unwieldy MySQL, it's the name of the database, real escape underscore string. And then you put whatever text you want there. Um, escape string being what you want it to do, MySQL being the name of the database, and real because the first one didn't work and they couldn't change it because of backwards compatibility. So anyone who'd used the original string, which is like more than 10 years ago now, but anyone who'd used the original form of this, completely insecure. Rather than patch that, they just added the word real. Anyone who forgot to add that or hadn't read through all the documentation, yeah, anyone can come along and effectively delete your database or do more subtle things like update other people's accounts or read other people's passwords. Because once you've got access to the database, if you work out how it works, there's really not much you can't do. And the thing is, it is so easy to get this wrong. If you get this wrong just once, anywhere in your code, and there are lots of really subtle ways that I'm not going to go into to get this wrong. It's not just a case of forgetting to escape quotes. Um, there are lots of really subtle ways to get it wrong. If you do that, then your web app is vulnerable. And if someone figures out that there's a way in there because they try and create a username with a quote mark in it, uh, then good luck, say goodbye to everyone's passwords. The way it should be done is something called prepared statements. And if you are programming anything to do with the database, you should be using prepared statements right now. Um, the way they work is, uh, it's a hack. It's a hack on top of a hack. Because let's be honest, sending that kind of plain English SQL command from a programming, that, that's a hack. And then we've had to put more on top of that, and, and more on top of that, and more on top of that. But prepared statements at least keeps it safe. With prepared statements, you send the query. You send select star from users where username equals, and then you just say question mark. And that question mark, you then later say, right, this is the data I'm putting in. This is not a command. Don't do anything to this. No matter what it looks like, this is unsafe. Just take it, treat it very gingerly, store it in the database, and don't look at it beyond that. It's a little more complicated than that. I'm simplifying massively for you know, talking into a camera. And if you're web programming, you should look up the, the recent security guidelines on what you should do, etc., etc., etc. But this is what you should be using. Because right now, if you're not using prepared statements, it takes one mistake anywhere in your application, one thing where you've forgotten to put a quote mark in, or messed it up in some subtle way that uses Unicode characters or something wonderfully complicated, particularly if you're using a Microsoft database. That's from someone who uses Windows. Um, if you're not using prepared statements, you are vulnerable, and you need to fix that. But in the meantime, as hacks go, there are worse ones. The adverts are generating revenue for that page in order to do that. And that's where cookies get controversial. The example I've given you is what's called first-party cookies.